All right, uh, I've covered this um, data radio once before in a different video. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But it is a uh, 60 watt uh, transmitter at uh, 400 to 500 megahertz uh, range. Has some pretty healthy uh, parts in it. And uh, it, it ran with a bunch of other boards in here that I've stripped out. So it only required, uh, I ever forget how much power, it had a lot of amplification. So if we're going to be using this with a, um, an HT, a handy talkie radio, it's gonna be outputting about one watt, okay? So we don't need the entire chain of amplification. We already have one watt. So we might be able to bypass a couple of the amplifier steps. So let's take a look at what's in there. Okay. All right, so the first uh, amplification stage is this. All right. And it outputs about 750 milliwatts uh, full power. So we can skip this step. The next step, step it takes is this one. And it uh, outputs uh, two and a half watts uh, maximum. And then it goes into this stage, which uh, is a 15 watt amplifier. And then that output of that 15 goes into this guy, which is a 60 watt device. All right, so. Uh, if we take a look at the input characteristics of this part here, which is a D2294, we can see here that um, if we have one watt in, we get about 15 watts out. So that looks like a really nice drive condition for uh, input. We'll input one watt, and then this thing will amplify it up to whatever it goes up to, right? And so I am going to skip the first two parts and I'm going to inject directly into this part, all right? Because it could take one watt. And so we would be good to go. So let's take a look at the actual uh, circuit here. Uh, this might be easier than the actual radio itself. It's bigger. Uh, I printed this out so I could kind of sleuth things. So the old transmit input was here and it went into that first stage and then it went along here, went into the second stage, and then it went along here into the third and then into the fourth. So what we're going to do is we're going to be getting rid of these two chips right here and we're going to be injecting directly into this part. Now this part uh, is capacitively coupled onto this node here, but it also has a resistor. So it has a DC path and an AC path to DC bias the gate voltage of the, uh, of the FET. So we actually want some AC coupling before we get to this uh, input impedance here. So there is a uh, capacitor right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this part and we're going to inject our signal right where its output is, okay? Its output is tied through a inductor to a plus V. So we need to get rid of that as well. So I have to remove this part and I have to remove its inductor. So I'll get rid of those two. Um, and I went ahead and removed this inductor here too, because I don't want to power this guy up if I don't need to. So this, I removed this inductor, this inductor, I removed this part, and then I soldered coax directly to here. So yeah, let me show you that in the, in the uh, actual device. All right, so uh, here's some coax, and I've uh, soldered it down right here, just before this capacitor, and goes into here. There's a ground right here, so that's where I'm going to be ejecting things. Um, that coax is going to come over here to the uh, transmit side of the relay. And uh, then the input will come from uh, this connector here from the outside. It will come in here to the transmit. So this, uh, let's put this little board back on. Uh, this um, board will get powered up with uh, VCC from 
from here. Okay, I'm pulling off this connector, pulling off VCC, so this board will get connected. Uh, when it sees RF, then it will change over. It will change from receive to transmit. It should do that automatically, and then we should send the signal through, and it'll go through. Uh, it'll come in here, get switched here, go through these two transistors and a filter, and then go out. So that's what we will be testing. All right, so I've got the uh, amplifier here. I've got power supply onto it. I'm going to be monitoring the power over here. I'm going to be transmitting uh, with this uh, Redivis radio. I have it set to low power. I don't remember how many watts that is. It's probably around one watt, uh, maybe even less. And uh, when I transmit, you hear the click? So the relay is clicking in, all right? And then if we watch the power, we get 32 watts out. And key down, there we go, 32 watts. Very nice. Um, so I think the uh, proof of concept is there at least. Uh, and I think it will be just great. Um, it does require quite a bit of power to get <laughs> these MOSFETs do get toasty. It, that's this whole thing is a big heat sink, so they do get toasty. Um, it's drawing about eight amps idle and maybe 11 amps when it's uh, transmitting, something like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got the BNC going in here. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it could work out just great. Okay, well that was a fun little project. Uh, turned this old radio into an amplifier. You can pick these up on eBay for somewhere between 20 and 20 and $30, somewhere around in there. They're super cheap. Um, you, might, you might look for them. They're called a Gemini uh, Data Radio Mobile Services. It's a, a digital link. It uh, went into trucks. It has a GPS and it could tell where the truck was and transmitted data for the cargo and all that kind of stuff. And uh, for whatever reason, these seem to be going on the uh, used market. All right, uh, so this of uh, two videos was about this uh, transmit receive switch. And uh, I've been wanting to build one and somebody already did it for me. So uh, it seems like a nice kit and works, seems to work good.